Hi all, I have another fun game to show you from the Chesscom Computer Championship Rapid Rumble Stage 2. This is a 15 minute time control with 5 second increments. Lila playing again Komodo, the official World Computer Chess Champion. Uh, now, this is a rematch for a very interesting opening. The first four ply or half moves e4 from Lila, g6, and starts off as the modern, but now knight f6. So, not particularly standard. Usually, bishop g7. Is the main move or d6 or c6 but knight f6 is extremely provocative now Lila chooses e5 this looks to be absolutely the best way to play it to test it now knight h5 was chosen not knight d5 and in fact on knight d5 white can be quite forceful uh, with c4 c5 bishop c4 there's not too many options for black the knight gets exchanged off and white has a very very pleasant position just by default here in this line uh, holding a, a kind of bind on the position and c5 can be held basically uh, hitting f7 and then holding c5 there's a big bind on the position here and this this is just an example to show white's really got a nice grip out of the opening here uh, so Basically, knight h5 is almost forced in this Norwegian defense in this continuation. Knight h5. Now, for the moment, yeah, this is quite amusing. For the moment, g4 is possible that the knight could go back to g7 to Fianchetto. Okay, now Leela chose actually knight c3. Another way of playing it, you might try and exploit the knight with bishop e2. But maybe the Norwegian defense isn't so terrible here after d6. If one tries to take this, there's a bit of counterplay here after d takes. If queen takes, then there's rook g8 with a bit of play, and that's been seen before. And on uh, d takes, again, there's a bit of play uh, with things like knight c6 and even queen d5 to b5 later. It's, yeah, there, there is some certain uh, gambit aspect to it. But it can be bypassed just with knight f3. Uh, and that's been seen before. That was in the game Adams against Magnus Carlsen, uh, uh, which followed knight c6. And e takes, actually, just content with a small but lasting advantage. And here, Adams played d, um, d5, sorry, uh, in this position. After e takes d6, not castling, Adams played d5. So he cemented against Magnus Colson a kind of central pawn wedge and was able to convert this position. So it's actually quite tricky for black, really, uh, this provocative knight maneuver. Uh, so that was, the, I believe, an Olympiad game. Uh, so Kanti Mansk uh, Olympiad 2010. So anyway. Leela plays knight c3, not bishop e2. And we have d5. On bishop g7, amusingly, that does take away the escape square of the knight, so g4 is embarrassing. Yeah, the knight's not going anywhere there. So we have, uh, after knight c3, d5, which controls the g4 a little bit. The knight's ready to go back to g7 at the moment. Now knight f3, which is a relief you know, g4 is now controlled. There's no g4. The knight fin chattos voluntarily. Yes, an amusing opening. <laughs> On bishop g7, there is a big threat of h3 for g4, by the way. So the bishop would have to go back to vacate g7 again. This would just be very, very silly. Okay, so knight g7, h3, c6. Uh, On c5 here, white could probably just take on c5 hitting d5 and this position bishop h6 <laughs> to actually prevent bishop takes c5 uh, and if the bishops get exchanged off here this is just very nice for white so we have c6 bishop d3 knight e6 uh, so what's really happened here the provocative knight maneuver actually in a longer term sense than tactics means that actually white has strategic breakthroughs with pawns perhaps more easy than white should. Uh, 
the centre for the moment is supported. But in the long run, there is an idea of F4, F5 even here from this position. If you can visualise this knight getting out of the way, F4, F5 is natural for white here. Uh, bishop G7, Queen D2. Black castles knight e2, which means that c3 becomes possible. Black does hit the center with c5. On knight d7, bishop h6 is possible, and exchanging off that defensive bishop and maybe a hack attack like this is actually quite pleasant. This is just an example continuation. Uh, this would be quite pleasant for white with a big advantage. So uh, we have c5, c3. C takes, C takes, C takes, knight C6. So H4, hack attack anyway. Queen A5, getting the queens off of one thing to. And Lila obliges uh, with this by playing H5, not worried. The queens do come off. Rook D8, Rook A G1, Knight B4, the bishop retreats, Knight C6. HG, HG, Knight E1. And yes, this reveals that there is this strategic breakthrough idea or just gaining space with the F5 plan like F4, G4, F5. It's a big plan and the opening really has facilitated that basically, the night provocation. Uh, A5, F4, very comfortable position indeed. A very easy to play plan it seems in some respects. A4, the bishop goes to D3. Uh, here, it is possible to play g4 already. Knight a5 isn't so scary. There is king d1. The bishop could retreat. It is looking awkward, but the knight and bishop hold up b2 here against, say, rook b6. So this position is actually okay for white. Uh, more than okay, this kind of scenario. But anyway, that this didn't happen. So we have uh, bishop d3. Uh, knight b4, yeah, the, it's toying, toying around, sorry, toying around now. After knight b4 here, and it looks as though the a2, a2 pawns attacked as well. Does the bishop actually have to retreat to, to protect a2? Well, Lila says, have it, g4. Yeah, the f5 break is, is really significant here. Uh, now, on knight takes a2, then knight c2 kind of creates a trap. For that knight and then f5 first then trying to win that knight the tactical response to full care but even with this black ends up with weak pawns basically after knight f4 this is a big advantage to white this position a4 is weak there's uh there's good attacking prospects here this is just very nice for white so uh we have knight f8 on knight takes d3 you might ask Knight takes is fine for white as well. This position, the knights are kind of nasty looking. F5 happens and it gets pretty nasty for black. The king can support d4. And if we get into, this is just a fictional uh, scenario. This kind of thing, white can still press down on the king side tactically with, with that pin and press down, for example, like this as an example, continuation with a big advantage to white. So there, there are ways to sort of really press home on the king side. So we have knight f8, bishop b1, protecting the pawn knight c6, f5 now, finally. And it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty menacing actually, this f5, knight a5, knight f4, putting pressure on d5 and g6. We have check, king e2, rook a6 is played. On knight takes e3, King takes, say this forcing move, it shuts down that bishop basically. Very unpleasant. And in fact, the bishop can be taken with an advantage like this. Uh, this scenario is just really unpleasant, where actually it's the knight that shut down now with this central pawn wedge. Now, this can be broken down eventually. Uh, this, this scenario is terminal because of this, you know, eventually the liability is like d5. Now, the pin, this, this is just crashing through. It's just a fictional example. So, uh, yeah, th these are horrible scenarios. We have actually rook a6. So the knight takes e3. Uh, knight ed3. f6 now. Yeah, this, this, 
it it looks horrendous uh there's there's things like night before on the on the cards potentially as well uh as well as night c5 yeah this it seems as though black thought this was the best move which is bad news basically is it shuts down that bishop and lula gets this huge central pawn wedge that is that is pretty nasty it also shuts down this piece as well this is not really a move that's entirely desirable uh yeah it it just looks as though there's a lot of pressure which has been built up and uh black's at breaking point now uh so yeah f6 is a very desperate looking move so e6 it's got a very desperate idea behind it in this position which is to sacrifice a piece if that central pawn wedge is left so a piece for two pawns uh if if this wedge is left it's obviously not intuitively not favorable I, as an example so this is the example to show you uh knight b4 here and then just taking over the c file is very good as well as hitting b5 so black's really play, playing like a piece down there with that knight shut out of the game and then white just wins the queen side or wins the bishop for example if if the rook tries to go uh, somewhere else then just just start winning the queen side this just knight's just like it's like a piece down so um yeah this is this is the idea black's idea sack a, sack a knight for a couple of pawns okay immediate threat is parried with rook h3 bishop h8 knight c5 rook c6 and yeah white's getting a pawn back here e5 trying to get some central pawn mobility bishop g6 we have b5 now Lila plays knight c5 letting b2 go it doesn't try and protect it well there's b4 anyway to consider so this is entrenchment after knight takes b2 okay it's another pawn biting the dust but look at white's pieces look at black's pieces they're amazing now the pieces are really well entrenched and look at this bishop on h8 so count pawns one two three one two three four five so two pawns only bishop f2 knight c4 uh, on rook f8 as an example by the way what is white doing well this bishop f2 does mean rook a3 becomes possible and um, if white in the ideal world i just wanted to check in the ideal world how white would do this white could get a rook to the seventh in the ideal world play this check and then maneuver the bishop uh to take over this important diagonal for a checkmate that if Leela had a few moves by herself she'd do that checkmate double check mate okay so knight c4 was played which covers a3 to a7 uh stops that knight d3 uh you know rook a3 to a7 so knight d3 bishop e6 and here actually a3 is played as a pawn move rook a8 knight b4 hitting the rook rook d6 now bishop f5 uh that's taken now g takes now look at that bishop it's just really killed there uh now here rook e8 was played taking the pawn on a3 is pretty hopeless after uh d takes for example this and um, bishop c5 black's just falling apart here basically yeah it's just horrible so uh we have rook e8 uh now king gets out of the way e takes bishop takes rook e4 rook d3 rook h4 knight goes back rook d7 so black is basically it looks as though black's playing a piece down at the moment unless his bishop's going to reroute in the future but uh, the active rook is swapped off there one less thing to worry about knight g3 bishop g7 the king comes up a bit now knight c6 the bishop at least finds a diagonal knight h5 but f6 is attacked again now knight a7 hitting b5 as well so here b5 is taken rook b3 knight d2 rook b2 knight e4 knight g3 some more simplification well nope not yet bishop takes a3 leader puts up with that with rook b3 bishop e7 now simplifying a bit so a piece up uh, unless there's going to be 
uh, a table based draw emerging which would be unfortunate Lila is just a piece up here uh, a lot of damage did seem to happen from the opening to be fair but it does take a good engine as well to to really prove an opening advantage can be fatal of course uh, so here uh, King takes f6 yeah this is just the mopping up job now a piece in the pawn up uh, the f pawn is going to be queening soon so here uh, uh, just get rid of that blockader of the f pawn basically yeah not not too much resistance is is offered or able to be offered here and the game finished with this checkmate here now to be fair this is a fun tournament to emphasize that these openings uh, are a bit randomly arranged not all engines in in their mini matches of two for a particular opening uh, but it was it was like a luck of the opening lottery as well but the Norwegian defense may not be the best opening <laughs> for black actually because Lila also lost with the black side earlier on in the tournament funny enough <laughs> to, to Komodo in this um, opening Norwegian defense uh, so what do we take from this well it seems um, one thing actually in punishing these provocative knight systems you know fancy knight maneuvers is sometimes just to invest make a solid investment into a long-term structural plan because it's the pawn structure which can store our advantages if you think back to Steinitz accumulation advantages he, he kind of emphasized that the romantic era players you know all about tactics but if you if you kind of make a more solid investment in the position you'd like your advantages to be stored somehow might add a concrete a solid nagging space edge playing for that f5 installing um, that wedge in the center which caused black to desperately sack a piece and there wasn't too much counterplay after that peace sacrifice it was neutralized and then the f pawn became the winning trump card after that okay i hope you got something from it comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much